Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning and welcome to our worship here on YouTube for First Presbyterian of Oregon, Wisconsin. I'm Reverend Kathleen Owens, pastor of First Pres, and we're glad to have you with us wherever you may be. We have many members who have contributed to this special resurrection worship service with videos and with photos and with music, and we hope that it will serve to be a reminder of the way that we are together in spirit on this day, even when we're unable to be together in body. For Christ has knit us together as one community, and so let us continue to worship and to praise God as that one community in this way until we're able to gather again. And let us continue in our worship now with our prayer of confession. We gather in worship giving thanks for the empty tomb. We gather in worship, giving thanks for the grace that flows from God's great love for us. We gather with the promise that nothing, not even death, can separate us from God's love. We gather with the promise that God's grace surrounds us in all times and all places. Let us offer our prayers of confession and praise to God. Loving God, we know that we fall short of our own expectations. We struggle to understand your will for our lives. We struggle to follow the commandment to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Help us in this time of great grief and anxiety to follow in your way. We ask your forgiveness for the times we have failed to show kindness and grace to our neighbors. We ask your forgiveness for the times we have failed to show kindness and grace to ourselves. We ask your forgiveness for the ways in which we seek to protect our reserves and abundance from those who have less. We ask your forgiveness for the ways in which we participate in systems that continue to support an imbalance in our society, protecting inequalities and prejudices. We ask your forgiveness for those times when we lose faith in your power to work through us and feel that we have little to offer 
and that our prayers and words of comfort will not be enough. We ask your forgiveness for those things that we carry in our hearts this day and share only with you. Merciful God, we know that you are at work in the midst of our fear and anxiety. Your shepherding presence walks with us. Help us, O Redeeming One, to accept your grace and mercy and the promise of renewal and rebirth, which you extend to us this day. Remind us, O God, of the promise of our baptismal waters, which call to us this day, reminding us that we are all your beloved children. You have called each of us by name to follow in your way and to love you and to love as you love us. So that we may continue to serve you with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! In, In Jesus, Jesus Christ, we, we are forgiven. forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Chapter 25, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. For he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly, with fear, and with great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. 
Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The word of the Lord. And let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Every gospel tells the Easter story a little differently, just as we all tend to tell our stories a little differently. In Matthew's version of this story, which Mark just read for us this year, we have the two Marys, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. We don't know which one she is. There's a lot of Marys. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, they come to see Jesus' tomb. And there's no reference in this telling of Matthew's version of the story to bringing supplies or spices or to why they were there other than just to see the place where Jesus was laid. It's like us visiting the gravesite of loved ones just to feel a little bit closer to them. And unlike the other Gospels, the Marys witness the stone rolling back. There's a flash like lightning and the stone rolls away right before their eyes. They witness this act directly before they meet Jesus in his risen form, living again. And it's recognizably Jesus who is before them and they fall at his feet to worship him as they did before. And Jesus tells the Marys to go and to let the other disciples know what has happened, to tell their story to others. And he tells them then to return to Galilee where he will meet them. And Jesus also warns Mary Magdalene and the other Mary not to be afraid as they go out and tell this story, but to gather the others, to tell them what has happened, and to return home to go back to where they came from. And this year, we are facing an Easter that is like others. We are hearing this familiar story. We've gone through many of the same motions in our worship today, and the weather is awful, and yet the flowers are blooming, a very typical Easter. It's familiar, and yet at the same time, Nothing is familiar in this Easter. It's unlike anything we've ever witnessed before. And we may understand just a little bit more of the predicament that these women were in on Easter morning, where they were ready to shout, Christ is risen, hallelujah. Where they were ready to go forward and to tell that story. And they hear Jesus as he tells them to go back to Galilee, back to where they came from, and that he is going on ahead and he will meet them there. And yet they know that this journey is already going to be different. For Jesus is not going to be walking step by step at their side as he did on the way down to Jerusalem. The women know that they have to turn and to head back to what is home and what is normal, and yet they know that nothing is going to be the same as it was before. Whatever they go back to is going to be different because of what just happened. The disciples had witnessed Jesus' persecution and death in Jerusalem, and it seemed that the authorities had won. They had silenced Jesus, made an example of him. But God stepped in to proclaim that the authorities who operated out of violence and fear would not win. That operating out of a position of violence and fear cannot win. Not even death would stop Jesus' message and teaching. The love that Christ showed, the love that he taught, that could not be silenced. Love would win. Resurrection would come. And in this resurrection, we learn that love is truly the strongest force in our world. 
And so here we are on Easter, when we too face a time when we must recognize that even when we return to where we came from, even when we start leaving our homes again to go to work or are able to gather for large events and parties or go to live concerts and performances or even go grocery shopping without a mask on, the world is not going to be like it was before. Everything has changed. And so we, like the Marys of Easter morning, have the chance to tell this resurrection story. We have the opportunity to craft the way in which we tell this story and the way in which we share this message with others. How are we going to tell our story? How are we going to tell this story of Jesus' resurrection into a world that we are seeking to help and rebuild and resurrect right now? What have we learned in this time? And how is it going to shape the way that we speak of Christ's risen presence among us? Of the reality that love is stronger than all forces, even death and even the economy. We are learning a lot about ourselves at this time. We're learning about our resilience. We're learning about our strength. We're learning about the depth of our ability to sacrifice on behalf of our neighbors out of love for them. We are learning about the value that we put on life. We are daily witnessing some of the best parts of human nature and creativity. It's all around us in this time. And we're also seeing some of the worst parts of our society exposed. We witness the disparate rate at which some communities are being affected, as African Americans and Hispanics are dying at far higher rates than whites. And as we see the impoverished areas of Milwaukee County suffer to a far greater degree than we are here in Dane County. We are witnessing the extreme fragility of our economy as millions of Americans are suddenly unemployed. And the challenges in our healthcare system as the millions who are recently unemployed are also losing their health coverage in the midst of a health emergency. We see difficult choices being made all around us as doctors weigh which surgeries are elective and which are essential, as our government seeks to work out which jobs are essential and which are not. We notice the hard work and essential nature of so many low-wage workers that often were an invisible force before, from our hospital cleaning staff to the grocery stockers to those who are working on manufacturing floors and driving our delivery trucks. We see extreme efforts being made to cover the needs of our children that are usually met in their schools not just for education, but for their mental health and for regular meals. And with schools shut down, we're more aware of how much our schools do for our society, more than just educating our kids. We celebrate Christ's resurrection today. We tell this familiar story. We celebrate that love triumphs over death that nothing can separate us from God's love, not even death. And we hear Jesus' words again as we do every year. Do not be afraid and go and tell the others. These are Jesus' words to us again this Easter as well. Do not be afraid and go and tell the others. God is calling us to set aside our fear as we look toward what we are going to rebuild coming out of this pandemic. And that does not mean that we should not be cautious, but that we need to lead with love and not fear as we move forward. We've learned a lot in this time about how much we can do out of love for our neighbors and ourselves. We've learned about our own strength and resilience, and we have learned that we are stronger and more loving than we may have realized before. We've also learned more about the needs of our neighbors and our global society as a whole. 
We've learned more about the inequalities and the inequities that are ingrained in our culture, our economy, and our geography. And we have a challenge before us as we return to where we came from. We have a story to tell that is one based on the great commandment which Jesus instilled in his disciples before he died. The core statement of our faith and of all that we are to do in following Jesus and in telling his story. It is to love God and to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. So what is this going to look like in our time? How will the way that we tell this Easter story help us to rebuild a more just and loving world? And how can we participate in the resurrection of our world, leading with love and not fear? How can we work to extend that love to our neighbors who are hurting? To repair the damage that is done by the discrepancies and the inequalities that have been so widely exposed by this pandemic? How do we tell the Easter story in a way that fortifies our ability to continue to sacrifice for our neighbors until we are all able to thrive. Until all people have access to basic supplies and protective equipment. Until we recognize the value and essential nature of those who are working hard and putting themselves at continual risk to care for our basic needs until we value our elderly and our children every day. This Easter, we have a special challenge before us. We can see more clearly. It is as though we, like the Marys and Matthews telling of this story, are also witnessing that lightning flash of clarity that rolls back the stone before our eyes. We, like the Marys of Matthew's Gospel, are afraid. But Christ has come to us, proving to us again that love is stronger even than death. And that we, like the Marys of Matthew's Gospel, can do this. We can go forth following the example of the women who have walked before us. We can lead with love and not fear. We can go forth telling the great Easter story. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now let us go back to where we came from. And tell this story again and again as we seek to resurrect a world that is more loving and more just. And may God be with us in this work this day and always. Amen. This is the day, the day for rejoicing. Christ is risen, Christ is alive. Sing his praise with jubilant voices. Christ is risen, Christ is alive. Sing alleluia, sing alleluia, sing alleluia. Christ is alive. Sing alleluia, sing alleluia, sing alleluia.
heavens in joyful praise. Death is conquered, Christ the King reigns. Lift your hearts, his Easter anthems raise. Sing Alleluia, sing Alleluia, sing Alleluia, Christ is our bride. Sing Alleluia, sing Alleluia, sing Alleluia. in death we belong to God through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit we trust in one triune God the Holy One of Israel whom alone we worship and serve we trust in Jesus Christ fully human fully God Jesus proclaimed the reign of God preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives. Teaching by word and deed. And blessing the children. Healing the sick. And binding up the brokenhearted. Eating with outcasts. Forgiving sinners. And calling all to repent and believe the gospel. Unjustly condemned for blasphemy and sedition, Jesus was crucified. Suffering the depths of human pain and giving his life for the sins of the world. God raised this Jesus from the dead, vindicating his sinless life, breaking the power of sin and evil, delivering us from death to life eternal. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We come now to the point in our service where we gather those joys and concerns that are close to our hearts and our minds this day. And we offer to God the prayers prayers that stem both from words we can form and from those thoughts and those needs, those thanksgivings that are so deep in our core, we just can't quite put them into words, but we bring it all to God and we offer our prayer. So let us pray. Gracious, loving God, we come before you on this Easter Sunday celebrating your resurrection your presence in our midst, the way in which love is triumphant. We give thanks for the power of your creative force that is at work in our world, for the ways in which you continue to inspire and motivate us and work miracles in our midst. And God, this day, we place into your loving hands those prayers, those griefs that we hold. We pray especially for all those families who have lost loved ones in this time and are unable to gather and to be together. We pray for all of those who are working so hard and putting their lives on the line to care for the ill and to care for our most basic needs. God, we place before you this day those that are in periods of waiting and wondering, for those with court dates delayed, with weddings put off, unsure of how to move forward, for those that have lost work and are not sure what they'll have to go back to. God, even in the midst of all this grief and all this pain of all that surrounds us and all the uncertainties of our time, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the sign of new life that comes with the birth of the children born in this congregation this week. We give thanks for 
the ways in which our neighbors and friends are sending messages of hope and love through hearts and windows and sidewalk chalk and friendly smiles and waves from six feet away as we walk. We give you thanks for the way in which your creative presence continues to surround us and uplift us, and we ask that we may go forward with love and not fear, that we may continue to serve in your name with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. And that in what we can put forward, even as tired as we are, that through us, your Holy Spirit will continue to work. Your creative presence will continue to flow. And in our hands and feet, we will be knitted together as your body. And so it is relying on your strength we go forward this day to celebrate your resurrection glory. And so hear us now as we join together in praying the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hear now these words from 1 John chapter 3. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods, yet refuses to help a sister or brother in need? As we gather this day, we remember God's great love for the world, and so let us offer our lives to the Lord. We encourage those who are able to continue making your pl current pledge to FPC, knowing this may not be possible for everyone in these times of financial uncertainty, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. For those who are able, you can mail your check to the church or try our new online giving option, which I found very easy to use. You can make either a one-time offering or set up an automatic weekly or monthly offering. A link will be available at the end of this video and is available in the weekly announcements email. This year, in addition to helping with natural disasters like the California wildfires and hunger programs in places like Peru and the Cameroon, one great hour of sharing is making more than $1 million available in grants to synods, presbyteries, and congregations in response to the COVID-19 virus. While typically the one great hour of sharing offering is collected on Palm Sunday, you can still give online. See the link at the end of this video or in the weekly announcements email. We offer our lives in many ways besides financial. So please keep in mind those less fortunate in these difficult times through your acts of kindness, advocacy, and prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, you call us as your children to show your love to ourselves and our neighbors. May all the gifts we offer this day be part of our work to fulfill your great commandment. We pray that all we can offer may become part of your creative work and turning mourning into joy and heal what is broken through the resurrection power of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Sustainer, be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.